right? Album of the week released November 15th, 1986 on Def Jam Records. Beastie Boys licensed to ill. What a fucking classic. Hell yeah. Um, number three on the U.S. Billboard 200. I remember um, when I first first time I heard this was Fight for yeah, Your Fight. Right. Yeah, Fight for Right video. I remember going to school and um, the black kid that I said would do the run DMC with, I, I asked him, I was like, do you like the Beastie Boys? He was like, yeah. I was like, I like that out and that, that song from um, License to Kill. He was <laughs> like, no, it's License to Ill. But I remember I bought this album the same day I bought the Cult Electric. Okay. And I only knew the one song. So when I listened to it, I was expecting the all, you know, to be heavy with guitars and stuff. Because, you mm -hmm. know, at the time I didn't like rap at all. So I remember I gave the tape to my sister. I was like, man, this sucks. You know, like I only like the two songs, the two, you know, that No Sleep for Brooklyn. But mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about the Beast Boys. I didn't realize they were a punk band before all that. Yeah. You know, I just heard that one song and, and I thought it was like a rap metal type thing. But, you know, then when I heard all the other stuff, I just wasn't expecting. Oh, yeah. It's fucking great. Like the rest of the world, man. You got to fight video is what fucking hook people. Yeah. I know. know. Especially, we'll just say it like it is anybody young and white at the time you know mm -hmm. it, it, it hooked you it was a great video yeah great sense of humor to it um that video so, is still still fun to watch you know, after absolutely. all these years you know yeah it's like it's great yeah. and the uh so me and mike said our but me and my neighborhood buddies one of them had it we list that's one of the ones we listened to non-stop um that's why I just remember Brass Monkey, that kind of hooked to Brass Monkey. Um, but the other, like you said, the other video, No Sleep Till Brooklyn, another amazing video. Kerry King from Slayers in it. Yeah. He actually played on it. You know, I mean, it's really Kerry King playing on that song, too. Mm -hmm. They looped uh, some Led Zeppelin songs. Ryman and uh, Stillman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then other songs on it, man. Girls. Uh, she's Paul crafty. Revere. Yeah. Paul Revere, low, uh, slow and low. Yeah. Fuck another good one, man. Slow and low. Um, okay. Yeah, man. Good record. Fun record. You know, people played at parties. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we'd have it running. You know, that was right around the time we were getting into skating. Um. Yeah, man, I got a lot of good memories of that 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 album. Yeah. Now, the thing about it, um, how I got into it, um, some friends of mine, like every time we we just go out cruising, and yeah. um, they would play that every time. So that's how I end up liking it. So then I remember mm -hmm. I took my tape back from my sister. I'm like, I bought this. This is mine. You know, like like um. Cause after I heard it a few times, and I was like, but see, man, you know, even like it's pretty poppy too so that's another reason i didn't like it you know what i mean like but you know like but looking back man it's genius man it's a brilliant record yeah. you know front to back you know it's like yeah but when um at 13 i just i wasn't feeling it yeah and the three of them created their own distinct personalities mm -hmm. you know I, I that's what i like about it too um and, and you know i mean it's the, the fact of the matter man it even white kids could identify to it you know yeah um yeah man great breakthrough type thing um fun record yeah and even the uh the drawing on it you know the part where there's a part on the plane if you look at it in the mirror it says eat me, eat me yeah 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 <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Like, yeah. Now, did yeah. you like any of their other stuff? Um, some of Check Your Head, 
because, you know, I would knew people at the time that was into that. So that would get played around quite a bit. And I didn't mind it. Um, and they more into their career, man, they they really were always creative with what they did. You know, they brought back at some point them playing instruments. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, they, they those guys were meant to had a great chemistry together. And, yeah. and everything they did worked. Mm -hmm. You know, so so they're clearly one of the, you know, I'll go as far to say one of the, you know, be, became one of the biggest musical things in history. You know, they really did. Mm -hmm. Like I liked um, Paul's Boutique. After that, it was a good record. Right, um, I know that Check, yeah. Check Your Head had some good stuff. Like I didn't like a lot of their later stuff, but then I went back and heard the early punk shit. So good, man. You yeah. know, like oh, well, I remember so when I once again when I worked at Media Play, um a collection of their punk stuff had come out like a compilation CD. Some old bullshit, was, probably. Yes, yes, yeah. actually, yes. And we had it in the the rap section and so what we would do is each of the uh each of the associates in the music department would get to pick a cd and put it they had like listening like stations where you could actually listen to the cd mm -hmm. yeah um, check it out at media play that was a cool thing about media play that they did that and a lot of a lot of people like that i mean yeah, it was a select CD. You could only listen to like what we put in the stations. You couldn't. Yeah, it's usually it. like new releases or something. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that that Beastie Boys got put in the rap thing, and I remember you know a lot of people like thinking, "Oh, Beastie," you know, into Beastie Boys, hearing mm -hmm. it, being like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> Having no clue that that was how they started was you know yeah. like punk like that. Um, so I always remember that being kind of funny, I guess, that it was marketed in the rap section when it it shouldn't have been. I get it because the fucking Beastie Boys, but like it wasn't a rap record when you're kind of putting it to people that that's all they know them for. Yeah. But they're going to expect that, you know, mm. and it's it, yeah. So, yeah, I remember that being kind of funny. But then, you know. The funny thing is, though, is like they eventually got where they were more, um, you know, I mean, they'll play them on like rock stations, you know, like they'll, yeah, yeah, more, more like punk, you know, rock fans were into them more than hip hop rap fans at that point, mm -hmm. you know, I mean? like, like, um, Licensed Ill and Paul's Boutique, they were straight up rap, but then like later on, I mean, like, they said, Check Your Head had some, you know, heavy stuff on them. So yep. you know, it became more like a rock band after mm -hmm. that, you know. Like I said, they kind of went back to their old, you know, playing instruments and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Excuse me, man. So excellent chemistry between those guys. They were all very creative. Um, I even know MCA man was into the Chromags. Like, there's pictures of him. Uh, Oh yeah, Not playing with the Chromags. Actually, I mean, like get like for a song, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah, you know, just imagine, you know, MCA Adam Yak at CBGB's watching the Chromags and like, oh yeah, eighty six or something, you know. Well, I know they um, early days they um, toured with like Bad Brains and sure, you know, and like like I think they played with the Chromags and. Think of even like the misfits and yeah, you know, like so yeah, like I mean they were punk rock kids and you just kind of you know evolved and changed through the years, but but everything well, like you said, everything you did worked. I mean, it was like that's why they were relevant, you know, the whole time because no matter what they did, it worked. And I think they came into the rap thing because that was another New York City culture. Mm -hmm. that that was in front of their eyes you know they were all from new york yeah and, and they kind of you know took a liking to it and you know got you know rick rubin and uh 
Russell Simmons started Def Jam. So that's, you know, how it all kind of pulled in together. Yeah. Yeah. And what's cool, though, is um, MCA is the one that passed, right? Yes. Um, that they, they didn't continue on without him. Yeah. Yep. You know, a lot he was of, actually my favorite one, too. A lot of, um, you know, because a lot of them, they'll try to continue on, you know, because I think Run DMC did. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just, it's not the same. You got to have all three of them there, you know. Yep. At least. I agree. <laughs> you about to pass out? No, it's just the awnings kind of want to relieve some of the pressure I got still in my jaw, man. Right on. All right, yeah. anything else on that then? No, man, just another classic. Did you ever Gladden. get to see them? I know. I no. think we talked about this before, but no, um, no. To answer your question, no. I do know that license to ill tour with Murphy's Law and Fishbone would have been yeah. amazing to see. Yeah, I yeah I remember that show with the vets. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would have been amazing, amazing. That. Yeah, that would have been pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Now there is stuff of Beastie Boys from the license to ill shit on YouTube, which it's all pretty good, man. It's pretty good. Yeah. Right on. Anything else? That's all I got, man. All right. Thanks for watching. Five and out. Five and out.